Yeah, I guess I would have a question um, for uh, the folks that use sound uh, with your work. Uh, sound seems so um, uh, foreign to me in terms of being able to use it as a medium, you know, being able to, to have it a part of what I do. And so I admire the folks that are able to kind of, you know, use sound um, and it becomes a real fluid part of, of your practice. Uh, I admire that a lot. So I'd be curious about um, if that's always been a part of your practice or did it come later or, um, you know, how, how that integration uh, works. I, I, I would say it's always been part of my practice, Matthew, and it's and it's um, whether whether it's sometimes it's there in full force and sometimes it's just barely there. I often just put a like a sixty hertz hum somewhere in the room uh, in an installation just to activate it, just to turn the static experience into a sense of duration. Uh, but I, but I think it all, it comes out of this idea that that early on I was trying to loosen the bolts of the boundaries of of of, of things, uh, the difference between sculpture and object and painting and performance, and I I I was paying as much attention to artists like Chris Burden as I was, uh, you know, the painters that I that I loved and and. And once you loosen those bolts and, and lay everything out on the ground and kind of make a horizontal playing field of everything, anything works with it. And I and I I always think of what Kathy was saying earlier. The the uh, she sees herself as a composer. I I do too. I think a composer is probably a better uh, a more accurate term for what I do than an artist. It just it it because it's. It's, the, it's like putting these different forces together in, in some sort of organizational uh, path forward. 